Think about what you were doing when you were 17. With a Sea Otter Dual Slalom podium under his belt and a fresh factory ride, Joey's set to make an impression this season. This is the story of Joey Foresta. This is Spoke Tales. He was really a grumpy kid until he got his freedom. Once he learned how to walk, he was the happiest go lucky kid ever. <laughs> There's two years between Sophia and Joey. They have been really close ever since they were very little, always playing together, always busting each other's chops, always a competition. Joey was a really quiet kid. It was really funny because he was always the the one that kept his mouth shut, and I, I talked for him pretty much because I was kind of that overbearing sister. I feel like I've always been competitive growing up, especially having a, a sibling and having Joey. I've always been kind of competitive because every sibling wants to one-up their other sibling. So growing up, I always competed with Joey in pretty much everything. We still race up the stairs. The first one to ride a bike without training wheels was Sophia. She was almost five, and Joey was about two and a half. Once he saw his sister do it, he said, Dad, I want to take my training wheels off. And I said, no. So he came into the garage and grabbed a tool that wasn't going to work and tried to get him off himself. So I took him <laughs> off. And I literally held him, pushed him into the grass. And he pedaled through the grass, onto the sidewalk, down the street, turned around on the driveway and came back. The neighbors were outside and everybody was going crazy going, we can't believe this is happening. So it was pretty easy for Joey. It was a little bit more difficult for Soph. What drew me to BMX was actually Joey. Um, he came out here first and I watched him for a few months and I wanted to be like my brother. So that's kind of where it came from and watching Joey out there riding and doing really well, I was like, whoa, I want to go out there and beat him and, or just be like him. Joey's got just so much bike skill, whether that's a BMX bike, a mountain bike, dirt jumper, he can, he can do it all. So when, when we come out here, I can learn from him and he can chase me as far as like the sprinting goes and the speed goes, but I learn a lot from him and I think we have a lot of fun just riding together because we're not necessarily competing. So it's not like a competitive, like we get mad at each other. It's more like we're pushing each other on our, on our weaknesses and we're just having fun riding. But of course, sibling rivalry and family support wasn't the only thing that got Joey to where he is today. Every athlete has a mentor, and for Joey, that was Cody Kelly. Well, the friendship started through BMX, and Joey really looked up to Cody. You know, he's older, he's cool, Cody's very good on a bike. Cody evolved from BMX to mountain biking, and so it was just natural for Joey to want to follow in Cody's footsteps. He took me out mountain biking for me to try it, and I loved it. And I. Didn't want anything to do with BMX after that, and I just wanted to mount bike constantly. Being able to get out and go go away and have fun, you know, and you know, you do that at any level of biking. You go out into the mountains or to the track, you know, you just kind of get a sense of just like freedom, I guess, and just it's really fun. It's it's really unique. been the key to, I think, the success of both our kids. So, like, you know, they have the work ethic, they have the passion for it, they knew they had to earn it, but not only earn it with us, but earn the respect of the people around them. They have really good people all around. And, you know, whether it's the bike shop, it's been GT for years for those kids, and the Kellys, there's countless others that making sure that they've earned their respect, not just on the bike, but off the bike, is important to them as well, and it's made raising them easy. You know, I knew he could handle the pressure. It's probably when he went to Sea Otter for dual slalom and he took second place in pro at 14. Yeah, I think a lot of other kids, including or even myself, you think he'd fold kind of under that pressure. But he was cool as a cucumber, didn't bother him. I thought, you know, if he has that kind of mentality as he keeps going, 
We could have a shot here. Oh my gosh, Joey's going to his first World Cup and I'm just so excited for him. When I'm saying goodbye, I'm just gonna wanna tell him to have fun and enjoy it, like, because at the end of the day, we're traveling the world to race bikes, so we should be having fun more than anything. And I know he knows how to ride a bike and I'm not worried about how he does. I just wanna have some fun. Coming into Croatia, I was really nervous. I didn't know what to expect. Never been overseas before. I didn't really know how fast I was, you know, on a world level, I guess. It was really cool to get to be friends pretty much with all these like great people. And that made this week a lot easier, I think. But it was still really nerve wracking going into practice and watching all of your heroes from when you're younger watching videos and they're just, they're riding in front of you. My first World Cup would be Bromont. It was they're so bad. I remember just being terrified and it was like pouring rain and like so muddy. But you know what? 10 years later, I'm still here. <laughs> Momentum is your friend. That's all I can say. <laughs> when I first walked the track, I was pretty overwhelmed, I guess. I had never seen a World Cup track or anything and it was pretty sweet being there and seeing what it was like. And I was pretty, pretty excited for the next day for practice to get into it. First day on course was pretty crazy. Uh, there's a lot of sections in this track that you do need to know the track to do. Um, there's a lot of blind corners, blind jumps. So going into it, I just knew that I had to take my time, not get too excited. I think that you just have to keep like a good state of mind to like keep consistently riding well, because if you like let it go to your head, then you start blowing out, you know? Try not to take it too seriously. I know it's like a massive thing and huge, but you just need to come in and get the experience. Don't 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 put too much pressure on yourself because you're learning. You're just learning, you're learning. Keep keep doing a few races and it'll all click one day. Don't don't try too hard at first. My nerves for Saturday were pretty high. I really didn't know where I was as far as world standings or really how good of a rider I am. I was really nervous for and I ended like with a really clean run. I was really happy with it and super stoked that I got fourth. I was actually really happy with that. So yeah, big weight off my shoulders after that, honestly. Wynn has actually gave me a ton of advice already. I've been getting advice from really everyone. Everyone has told me just have fun. It's really nice to have no pressure on you. You know, the pressure is just from yourself, not from anyone else. I'm really happy with the run I had, but I did know that I did mess up a few sections, but nothing substantial, you know? So I kind of know what I need to work on for the next one, and uh, yeah, just gonna move forward from it and learn. The biggest takeaways, I think, are probably just friendships. Um, I, I became friends with all the riders, um, you know, everyone from GT. I think that's really huge, and um, you know, those ones will last forever, so I'm really excited about that.